Jack from Oxford Junction. And uh, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Somewhere in here. <clears throat> Rusty, 50s to 70s, rusty, dusty owner of a forgotten roadside attraction, wife, <coughs> 30s, fresh-faced, well-heeled, newlywed, clearly in love, husband, 30s to 40s, khaki wear, well-to-do groom turned eager to please hubby, setting, a struggling roadside attraction, more a quirky trading, trading post or a curio shop than museum proper, the simple set consists of one round table at center, a second smaller table upstage, right, covered in charcoal briquettes to uh, suggest petrified wood. A large jar sits on the round table with a handwritten label that reads, Pueblo Defense Fund. The only additional props needed are a large, vaguely phallic-shaped rock and a stuffed jackalope. Times. The present place, a roadside attraction somewhere near Gallup, New Mexico. All right. Rusty, let's see what. Rusty sits at a table, idly playing cards. He is dressed in outdated Western wear and bolo tie. Seated across the table from him is a large stuffed jackalope comically wearing aviator sunglasses. Rusty throws his poker hand down on the table <clears throat> impatiently, squinting from beneath his Stetson out into the audience. He addresses his comments to the taxidermed jackalope. Jack, like Elwood P. Dowd, addressing the imaginary rabbit Harvey. Looks like our shop just rolled in, and it's a Cadillac. What's that, Jack? You telling me you say, I say the same thing every time a luxury car pulls in? Well, that's cause I remember the happy day when that Texas oil man and his new wife and their brand spanking new caddy pulled in to view my wares back in 99. They left here happy as a couple of horny toads <laughs> and left me a Texas sized donation of dinero to keep my little historical museum afloat. Peers out into the audience as if an anxious Ship captain. I'm telling you, they're rare as a beauty mark on the butt of an armadillo. But history gets certain folks all hot and bothered. They get their hands on my artifacts, and pretty soon they're stuffing them in one another's pantaloons and booking a last minute room at the side saddle inn. Yep, they're smooching in the car right now. I can see them. <laughs> anyway, here come our newlyweds. And your husband and wife. Afternoon, folks. And uh, welcome to the treasures of the Nuevo Mexico and our special exhibit, The Wonders of the Jurassic. I'm Rusty, and this here is my pack rat, pack mule, poker partner, and right hand man, Jackalope. Uh, that's Jack for short. Looks like y'all just got yourself hitched. Just the two of us, the minister, and a couple of witnesses at a darling little chapel up near Taos. We couldn't wait to tie the knot, so we eloped, didn't we, hon? We figured, what the heck? Neither of us is getting any younger. Imagine, all of 30-something years and young and getting long in the tooth. You hear that, Chad? I'll tell you, it makes a couple artifacts like us feel downright Mesozoic. <laughs> I admire your gumption, though, kids. I do. When you find something you love in this fly-by-night world, you got to grab hold of it before it's history, like hitching a ride on the interstate, I guess. The interstate of enchantment. Lucky for you, the interstate of enchantment runs right through my museum. You know what they say, get your kicks on Route 66. <laughs> now you kids hit on in and explore our hands-on collection of petrified wood. I'll be along shortly to show you the wonders of the Jurassic. Husband and wife walk past him and head eagerly upstage to a table piled up with what looks like charred campfire wood. 
Look at that, Jack. Just look at him. Happy as two pigs in steak. Uh-oh. You can see it in their eyes. I'm telling you, Jack, folks get that look in their pocketbooks open up as wide as a pair of elastic bloomers. <laughs> look at them in there and laughing and giggling like they're on a field trip. Husband and wife begin marking one another's faces and bodies with charred wood. He marks her chest, her, the front of his pants. You know the routine now. We let them play with the petrified wood till they're practically glowing radioactively with sweetness and light for one another. And then we show them the dino egg. Then come your crocodile tears, and for the grand finale, the meteorite on loan from the Pueblo. Look at there, there's our cue. She just gave him a peck on the cheek and a brush on the rump. Rusty walks quickly upstage to join them. I see you folks got your hands on our fine collection of petrified wood. Our next miracle is right around the corner. Behold, a bona fide dinosaur egg from a distant past of volcanic eruptions and sulfurous gases. No, I'm not talking about me and Jack after eating pinto beans. I'm talking about an age when giant reptiles roamed these scorching plains. Can, can I touch your giant reptile? I'm flattered, miss. It's been 20 years since a woman asked me that. <laughs> Go ahead and please yourself. Think of the life that could come from this egg, honey. Looks like an ostrich egg to me. That's because the dinos are distant relatives of the birds we know today. And to think that beautiful birds could come from a cold-blooded lizard. That's mother of nature for you. Always putting two things together you'd never in a million years think to pair up. Moving right along now. Uh, this here is our final and most ancient miracle. Feast your eyes on the space rock. Life holds an oversized phallic piece of rock. It's so hard. <laughs> it's exciting to see you, miss. Uh, <laughs> you might be mighty glad for company, too, if you've been orphaned from your planet comet for a few billion years. Regular chip off the old block. Oh. Tell us, which comet did the meteor descend from, Rusty? Alpha Taylor Swift. <laughs> In the constellation Celebrity. Sounds vaguely familiar. She's a mighty big star. Let's hold it together, honey, can we? You go right on ahead and tag team that hunk of... Hunk a hunk of burning space debris to your heart's content. It's a free country, ain't it, Jack? As he, as he appears to come to the jack of them. Now stop that blubbering, partner. There's no use crying over spilled milk or crushed comets. Your rabbit friend seems really upset. Well, that's because the space rock there truly belongs to the local pueblo. Not long ago, a gaggle of officials from the New Mexico Department of Naval Gazing and Ball Handling swooped in from the capital and claimed it as the rightful property of the state. So Jack and me started up a little collection to help the Pueblo mount a legal defense. Once we get $2,000 in the pickle jar there, the res will be filling in a motion in court to keep the G-men in Albuquerque from getting too handsy with their rocks. It's sweet of you to help with these mount mounting motions. The last newlyweds to come through our little exhibit contribute $100 to the cause. How long ago was that? Been three years ago, if it was a day. That about right, Jack? It must be quite a challenge to maintain your fundraising momentum all the way out here. Well, good looks and personal charm can take a man only so far. <laughs> Anyhow, we couldn't rightly believe these two, could we, Jack? Hell, they were driving a rusty old Plymouth van. Looked like they'd been eating buzzard guts for weeks. Still, I gotta hand it to them. They dug deep. Wife, not so subtly, not just husband. Uh, we'd love to make a donation as well, if you would accept. From a couple of newly marrieds? Why, we wouldn't dream of it. You need that money if you ever want to hatch a brood of your own. Darling, do you ever want to have a bunkhouse full of your own little buckaroos? Oh, we want to start a family in the worst way. I shouldn't tell you this, but we, we started trying last night. Hell, no need to try, darling. It ain't rocket science. Your man here just docks his rocket launcher in your space station, and nine months later, your slimy little alien hatches. If that couple in the Plymouth can throw $100 into the kitty, we could raise them $100, couldn't we, hon, to mount the Pueblo in their defense? This is no time to be stingy, sweetie. Not when a proud people's culture is at stake. We spent almost that on one night in Santa Fe. We'll raise theirs by five hundred dollars then. My goodness, folks, me and my rabbit friend here don't know how quite to thank you, do we? 
It's a regular astronomical miracle. It's the least we could do. Besides, we're fortunate to be in good position. It's always good to find yourselves a good position. <laughs> Even missionary. <laughs> well, that concludes our little tour. I suppose you folks still be wanting to get back on the road if you aim to make it to the Grand Canyon by evening. Neither of you got a wink of sleep last night, did you? You must have been a newlywed once yourself. Five times, uh, actually, <laughs> with four different women. You went to the same woman twice. Yeah, but the second rodeo wasn't much worth the price of admission. <laughs> no siree, I folded long ago in the high stakes marriage game. Anyway, you good folks will have to excuse me. I'm curating a special exhibit this afternoon, and it's time for Jack here to take his afternoon siesta. He gets mighty ornery if he sits in the sun too long. Not too good for his skin, neither. Rusty drapes a black cloth over the jackalow, walking it temporarily off stage. With his back turned to husband and wife, he hastily fashions what looks to be a primitive cross made of mesquite wood. I can't imagine how you memorize the details of all those strange and wonderful artifacts. What about those boots under the table there, Rusty? What's that provenance? I uh, bought those uh, just last month. Uh, I mean, it feels like a month anyhow. Acquired them over in Gallup, New Mexico for the uh, house of Sam Walt. Same place I got this bolo tie. <laughs> he hands it to husband for his inspection. House of Sam Walton? Is that native adobe? Oh, big old trading post owned by a cowboy entrepreneur who rode in from Arkansas a while back. <laughs> Looks like they were worn just yesterday, don't they? What about your rabbit friend? He must be vintage, too, if you go to the trouble of covering him in cloth every afternoon. You mean Jack? Hell, let me see here. I reckon he's a shamanic totem for the local Pueblo people, themselves descendants of the Anasazi, and used in ancient times to perform a marriage and fertility rite called the uh, uh, Festival of the Macho Jackalope. The Machalope. <laughs> the Macho? Imagine all the raves and squaws it brought together. Oh, yes, sir. He's the Marvin Gaye of taxidermy. Rusty. <laughs> uh -huh. Cocks an ear toward the jackalope off stage. My rabbit friend reminds me I ought to tell you folks of the sacred cross of didgeridoo. The sacred cross of didgeridoo. <laughs> this here's primitive crucifix brought by the missionaries that accompanied the Spanish, called in to put down the Playbo revolt. It's a kind of a older than the alligator juniper. How old is it, Rusty? I'd say about three minutes, oh, I mean, 300 years old. 300 years old? That's amazing. Go on, then. Take it with you on your honeymoon as our gift. The sacred cause of Digeroo? Consider it our wedding blessing to you. Ah, uh, could we make an appropriate gesture to compensate Rusty? We'll offer you $500 for it on top of our donation to the Playbill Morning Fund. You can't put a price on history, dear. We're going to spend that much on Burroughs and a guide at the Grand Canyon. Done and done. Here's a check for fifty. Oh, sorry. Refund. Done and done. Here's a check for fifteen hundred dollars, Rusty. If you'll throw that in the deck of cards, there, you're sweet in the pot. I tell you, I feel lighter than ever. I feel like I could take my bride in my arms and carry her right out the door. Wife swats at him as he scoops her up and carries her down stage. Whoopee! <laughs> Looks like we've got our own fertility right to perform. Keep your hands on the wheel out there, you hear? Don't want you laying an egg right in the middle of Interstate 40. <laughs> May the didgeridoo be with you! And, and also, also with, with you. you. Rusty waves off stage to the departing newlyweds, <laughs> then throws his Stetson into the air in jubilation. Whoopee! We sure are something. Thanks to that cross I rustled up two minutes ago, We'll be able to keep our little roadside attraction here attracted for another year, maybe two. And we got us enough cash in the kitty to help the playbill beat back those vultures at the state. A pause as he retrieves the jackalope from off stage and uncovers it only to discover it's newly adorned in bling. Well, I'll be tarred, feathered, and taxidermied. History, got you feeling your oats, Jackman? 
You ought to know there ain't no history, ancient history here, just some charred embers from the state park and an ostrich egg. Only real treasure in this place is that meteor on loan from the Pueblo. No, sir, what we got here in our little roadside attraction is the treasure of Nuevo New Mexico. Emphasis on the Nuevo. <laughs> and an amazing ability to turn people on to history. Emphasis on the turn on. Yes, sir. I reckon the real question is, is I reckon the real question is, what is it about me personally that gets them couples like them so hot and bothered? I'm asking you to help me my help me inventory my Jurassic assets, partner. Is it my huevos or my rancheros? Or is it just this fine specimen of a cowboy from head to toe? Starting with the prominence of my aged leather boots, worn through the bucking and the kicking of five marriages, including two of the to the same filly, and a hell of a ride it was too. Moving right on up to this crusty pair of jeans plastered to these pale T-Rex legs of mine. Hell, this stonewashed denim hasn't been stonewashed since old Levi himself trekked across the west. And that $20 bolo tie that makes me look like half a million bucks? Reckon I'd take 50 for it if the right offer came along, then donate all the profits to the Pueblo. So you want to celebrate by going into town to tie one on, is that it? Well then, let's put up the clothes sign, Jack, and go have us a celebratory round. He drapes the jackal open in black cloth again, tucks it under his arm, grabs his hat from the floor, and heads for the door. Now wait just a new Mexican minute. You hear that, partner? Either my imitation dino egg is about to hatch, or some more visitors just pulled into our little hitching post. Raises his Stetson to peer out into the audience as before. Judging from all the empty Coke cans they got tied to their bumper, I'd say we got us another round of newlyweds coming. Well, you're going to sit there like a three-toed sloth, or you're going to get that dusty, go off that dusty duff of yours. We've got us a history of horny public to serve, and some more money to raise to keep our friends at the Pueblo get the state off their backs. You're, I'm sorry. You're in luck, folks. I'm just about to shut the lights off in the museum, but follow me around the back to the courtyard and get a look at, at the treasures of Nuevo Mexico, including the original Treaty of Guadalupe Fidel Castro <laughs> and the historic gold claim of the Vice Royalty of George Clooney, not to mention our special exhibit, The Wonders of the Jurassic Age. I'm Rusty, and this old stuffed shirt is my partner, Jack. We're pretty much Jurassic specimens here ourselves, that's it, folks. Don't be shy. Come on out and see the Courtyard of Wonders, where history is one part perspiration, one part imagination, and two parts pure T-Rex animal magnetism. History's a hell of a lot like love. It'll have you feeling frisky as a couple of school kids stealing kisses in the closet if you don't watch out. Rusty shuts off the lights and exits, gesticulating to his offstage visitors as if an overzealous tour guide. A brief blackout indicating the passage of time. When the lights come back up and we see husband and wife sitting on two chairs pushed together. They're cozied up with a blanket as if on a couch or love seat at their hotel. They're finally <coughs> inspecting the sacred cost, cost of the didgeridoo. <coughs> husband looks intently at wife as if waiting to unburden himself of a secret. You know what isn't real, right? The sacred cost of the, the sacred cross of the didgeridoo? I know it now, but I didn't then. Upon closer inspection, the sacred cross of the didgeridoo is bound with nylon string, circa the late kick, kick and was it crab? Crapacious. 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 Crapacious, period. <laughs> That's why you wrote the check, wasn't it? Because I believe. And to donate to the Playboy's legal case against the state. That much is real. I read it in yesterday's newspaper, before we left Taos. Rusty's a good enough egg. Damn my naivete. Without that damn naivete, you wouldn't have married me, right? Mm. I married you, mister, for your kindness and generosity. Not to mention your cunning. My cunning? That's Rusty's, that's Rusty's turquoise bolo tie you're wearing, isn't it? Why, yes it is. I figured we paid handsomely for it. We did. And anyway, the sacred cross of the didgeridoo gave us a memory I'll always treasure, not to mention a memento. A memento of what? A memento of this. 
She holds sacred cross above them as if mistletoe and pulls him toward her by his bolo. Mm -hmm. You know that they say romance is two parts imagination. Do you want to play governor of Nouveau, New Mexico for tonight, darling, or shall I? Lights dim as she leans in to kiss him, tossing their shared blanket aside to reveal the smiling figure of the stuffed jackalope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do we have to tell Zachary now? Anything besides cute? Uh, I didn't like the end Clever. scene. I thought it should have ended on... When they just walk out. When they, uh, with, with him. With the, uh, with the, monologue. the monologue at the end, with the new people coming in. That should have been the end of the show. This was, if this could have been stuck in somewhere before that, you know, like, as, uh, as, as they're leaving, they go through that, you know, that he was... Uh, you know, yeah, we, had to be in our we know it was a lie in all this, right. you know, uh, and then we ended up with uh, with the huckster going, you know, hey, new people, hey, come in. you know, my boy. Uh, it's just like I wasn't. Uh, I found it a little uh, confusing at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did they get all that stuff? Right. Yeah. How did they get his bolo tie? His bolo tie and the jackalope. They didn't talk about that. Yeah, and how did the jackalope get the bling on it? Yeah, <laughs> right. Because right? I was wondering when when they took when he took the jackalope off, why would he do that? Mm -hmm. It's to put the bling on it. Where the bling come from? Right. It's like yeah, it was some confusing stuff. Yeah, I mean reading it, I thought I was not real. In other words, I was from out of space or something because all these things, like he said, all of a sudden gold got on here and like. We were doing something that weren't wasn't really human possible. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You left him money and kind of, but you, you would have thought if they left that yeah. all the stuff they took, he would have. But, yes. it, but it, there's no mention of yes. us taking it. Maybe right. We, how do we have it all of a sudden? Right. It was kind yeah, of. Yeah, that that part I found a little Yeah, I found that one. They gave him a big check. Yeah, they did. They did. But I did find, I did, up until that point where things got a little scattered, I found it fun. Yeah, it was fun. I was trying to think of who would play that role. I think the guy who mentioned was excellent, by the way. I was trying to think of who would be so outrageously, I can't think of. It's a great what character. kind of actor would be outrageous in it, in it? Something like that, but he has to carry the whole thing. Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a Harold Hill part. Harold Hill, right. Okay, cast. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be that he wasn't real? Yeah. That and Rusty was not real? That maybe he was like, a, you know, like you put a coin in and you get a story, mm -hmm. and so the roadside, the roadside attraction is there, but there's really nobody there. Like maybe he's just uh, like the, the the wizard who or the what the card reader who reads your fortune yes. when you put it in a quarter, oh, yes. and they just help themselves to whatever was there and left some money. That's interesting. That's an interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, now we're going. Yeah. I think Maria should check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Next. Mm -hmm. no, I'm so We're going to read no. from Beads to Beignets. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 